Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar on the topic of the circular economy related to the aerospace sector, or actually more generally to the entire aviation sector. Here I can quote an official EU document on this topic, which stipulates circularity can be part of the policy response to address systemic crises such as climate change or the recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic by providing circular systemic solutions for sustainable growth and economic recovery. My name is Thilo Schoenfeld. I work for the French innovation cluster Aerospace Valley called Pôle de Compétitivité in France, which is located in the southwest of France. Our Aerospace Valley cluster is a member of a European project called ESEP Euro SME, which is coordinated by our colleagues from the Italian Aerospace Cluster DAC in the Campania region. The overall objective of this ESEP Euro SME project is to boost the collaboration of the SMEs within our respective clusters and across the involved regions with a relevant focus on the circular economy. Today we have two experts. I am pleased to introduce both Mr. Emmanuel Borrepert, who is Senior Advisor at Hopscotch Consultancy Office, and then Mr. Ludovic Moulin of Alpha Recyclage Composites Company, who will present us the vision on the topic from an SME perspective. The last about 15 minutes of the webinar will then be dedicated to the usual question and answer session. You can ask your questions in written format during the entire webinar. We will then read them at the end of the presentations. Finally, your micros are muted and the webinar is registered with a replay that will be available via the YouTube channel of Aerospace Valley as of tomorrow. The presentations will also be sent to all of the registered participants. With this short introduction, I propose to hand over the micro and the screen to our first speaker, Mr. Emmanuel Borreper. Thank you, uh, Thilo, and uh, hello, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to deliver this speech today. The title of my presentation is uh, Circular Economy, How This Concept uh, Could Apply to the Aeronautic Industry. A uh, few words, as mentioned by Thilo, a few words to introduce myself. I, have a, I am a former journalist, I, I am a consultant in public affairs for more than 30 years, and I have been General Secretary of the European Battery Recycling Association from 98 to 2008, and it was during this period that I have really discovered what is the concept of the circular economy, because we, we faced on the question of how to uh, recycle the used batteries and to recover the materials contained in these used batteries. And then after this period, I have been member of uh, several working groups commission at both national and European levels. And the European Recycling Forum, I will come back to this uh, forum because I think it's an, uh, interesting, it's an, an, an opportunity in the field of circular economy and also in governmental commission in charge of batteries, waste of electrical and equi electric equipments, plastics and uh, furniture waste. I'm today consultant for Valdelia. I will uh, introduce this uh, organization. Valdelia is a non-household uh, organization dealing with the furniture waste and I'm um, some missions also for ADEM or for the SRAP, the French organization of battery recycler. And uh, to conclude this presentation, just to mention that I'm, I am the writer of a book on the extended producer responsibility for the management of used product. Um, well, I have a problem. Ah, okay. Uh, well, uh, the uh, presentation to do uh, today is um, how do you go from that, I mean from dismantled aircraft to, to that, I mean to design and practical furniture and definitely uh, when we are discussing circular economy it's important to, to say where we are going 
in the view to the reuse of the uh, used material. Okay, when you, you go in details on the uh, components of an aircraft, for example, uh, you can see in this picture that you have a lot of, uh, of parts, of uh, parts that could be used or reused after the end of life of the aircraft. The idea is the same for batteries or for uh, electrical and electronic equipment or for tire. When we uh, start the collection or the, of a product and then we uh, open the door to the dismantling, when we, we can find a lot of parts and a lot of products and the job in a view to be very efficient uh, for the circular economy. It's uh, what we, we plan to do with this. Where is the value of the different parts and what we can do in a view to achieve a high level of, uh, of the recycling and the raw recovery of this uh, used product. So what is very interesting is, um, about the, circu the circular economy, it's how uh, we can implement it. And uh, the first thing uh, to uh, mention is how we define the circular uh, economy. And uh, because it is definitely very different with the linear uh, economy, uh, because in one way you um, extract some uh, materials from earth and then you uh, manufacture some products and then you have some different players that use and uh, the product and at the end of the stage uh, while well, the product are in the in a end of life uh, position so well, what we do at the end it's really the same both for our adult uh, ways and uh, non household waste, including uh, cars, aircraft, uh, trucks, and so on. Well, the idea is definitely to find the best way to have this circle uh, totally closed. I mean, we use some product, then you, we manufacture some, some equipments, or some uh, automotive, or some engine, and so. And at the end of the life, what we do with this, and we, mean, uh, we need to extract all the product, and if it's possible, to reintroduce uh, the used materials in new product, even for um, the same products, but for also for other products. Um, Definitely, linear, uh, the linear economy is an obsolete system because we face at the, at the worldwide level that we, we need to uh, protect uh, the quantities of the materials, uh, the minerals in the earth uh, because the extraction of the impact for environment and the resources are uh, less and less important. So we have to do something for that. Extracted material uh, that uh, pollute and are not renewable, and uh, some waste that uh, accumulate, and uh, we need to have uh, a new answer for that. So for the future, and the future for your industry is now, it was uh, 10 years ago, for the uh, sector of uh, electrical and electronic equi equipment for the cars, uh, for the tire, for um, the batteries. But now it's my opinion based on my long experience in all this sector that it's time to find a new way uh, for dealing with the US product, including uh, your sector of the aeronautics. And we, we need to look um, beyond uh, the current tech make waste extractive industrial model and it's very important to design out waste and pollution and keep products and materials in use and at the end to regenerate natural systems. 
when we discuss about uh, the circular economy, it's very important to have a look on uh, what is happening uh, regarding the regulation, because uh, we are discussing an issue that are a lot of consequences, consequences, uh, financial uh, consequences. So it's very important to have a legal framework to uh, to make sure that it's possible to develop this circular economy and to make sure that uh, the cost, if needed, uh, will will be uh, shared by all the partners around the chain. So. Uh, at the uh, European level, it has been decided by the new Commission uh, to, uh, to establish um, a circular economy action plan in the framework of the European Green Deal. Uh, so it includes uh, some elements regarding the extended producer responsibility and, in addition, some new legislation for other sectors. And definitely, it's my opinion that the sector of uh, uh, aeronautics uh, will be included uh, in the very near future because it's a mine. It's a mine of product, and we have to do something with the uh, the, 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 plane, the, the planes when they are at the end of their life. Um, well, a few words about the European regulatory framework with this uh, Circular Economy Action Plan. It was adopted in, uh, in March, uh, three months ago. Um, it is one of the main blocks of the European Green Deal, uh, and it, uh, it proposed uh, some initiative along the entire life cycle of products targets, uh, for example, their design, promoting circular economy processes, uh, fostering sustainable co consumption, and aiming to ensure that the resources used are kept in the EU economy for as long as possible. And it's very important because we face um, a global competition uh, and uh, some uh, countries are China are very interested by some materials they are going in Africa or in other countries because they need some uh, raw materials and uh, the best way to deal with this is to to see how we can uh, develop the flow of the secondary raw material and uh, in addition this uh, plan this circular economy action plan introduce legislative and non-legislative measures targeting areas where action at the EU level brings real added value. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, there is a set of measures uh, to make sustainable products uh, the norm in the EU, empower consumer and public buyers, which is the reason why uh, we, need, we are in the circular need to have all the players in the cycle and it focuses uh, on the sectors that use most resources and where the potential uh, for uh, circularity is high such electronics and ICT but uh, as mentioned batteries and vehicle, uh, vehicles, packaging, plastic, textile, construction and buildings, food and nutrients. The, the goal of this uh, plan is also to ensure that we, pro we produce less waste and to make circularity work for people, regions, and cities, because we need to have all uh, the stakeholders on board to make sure we will achieve a high level of uh, the circular economy. What is the situation uh, in France? It is more or same the less uh, on the main ideas developed by the Europe, European Action Plan. Uh, probably you know in February, uh, in last February, a French Act of Law uh, was published. Uh, it is called uh, the La Loi Relative à la Lutte contre le, ba le Gaspillage et à l'économie circulaire, I mean against waste, to prevent the production of waste and for a circular economy. 
uh, this French Act of Laws contains about 50 measures providing for new obligation with the creation of new producer responsibility sector to include new products and uh, you can see here a list of new products and uh, we will see in the, in the coming year additional uh, sectors that we could be included in, in this system. Um, there are some new prohibition, uh, more uh, dedicated for, for products, uh, for uh, household products as uh, single-use plastics. And there are also some uh, provisions to better control and sanction offenses against the environment and to support companies in their eco-design initiative with a system of bonus malus. And finally, to assist citizens in new consumption practices. And uh, for example, what is very new in France is uh, uh, reparability index. As we, we are discussing about the circular economy, it's, it's important to, to, to show how um, we can close the loop. And uh, the closed loop concept has been developed uh, during the last uh, 15 years uh, because the idea is uh, when you, you start um, the production, the manufacturing of a product, then you have the conception, the collection, the sorting, the transportation, and the recycling. And in some uh, sectors, it's definitely possible to make sure that the materials contained in the used product could be reused for uh, the manufacture of uh, new ones. It is the, be the, the best, um, the better case is uh, the lead acid batteries, probably you know, because of there is a value for the, uh, for the lead, the lead acid batteries are easily collected because they offer this value. And then uh, they are sent after collection, they are sent to recycling plants, while where the uh, electrolyte is neutralized, the casing, uh, the polypropylene uh, casing is crushed and then uh, reused for recycling. And uh, all the lead, what is uh, the content at 80% uh, of the weight of the batteries, is reused for the manufacture of new batteries. And this is the reason why in this sector, uh, we can achieve a recycling efficiency of more or less 98%. And uh, definitely it's, a, it's an example that uh, we need to follow when we start with a new waste stream uh, to uh, achieve uh, this uh, objective of the circular economy. Um, have a quick look on the, how this concept, this concept, excuse me, uh, could be uh, applied in the uh, in different sector. And uh, I would like to draw your attention to the situation of the automobile sector, uh, because when we implement the circular economic concept, and uh, we we will go to the uh, production of uh, the use of uh, energy uh, lower, uh, low, less water and chemical products, and the uh, high level of recycling of the uh, use. And I would like to show you uh, what are um, the different steps on how uh, a car manufacturer, the French company Renault, or the global company Renault, uh, which is a, a pioneer and a, in a leader in, uh, in the circular economy. And what has been done in this sector? Because, uh, probably they have more pressure because these cars are for the consumers and uh, politicians or legal authorities are uh, in the first day more concerned by products that are used by consumer because they need to show that we do something for environment. But what is interesting, well, the, the case of Fono is that the concept could be more or less the same as that, uh, the one for uh, your sector, the sector of uh, aircraft. 
Um, the first step is um, the eco conception of vehicles. I think that now it's widely um, um, organized in a, a lot of sectors because we need to make sure that we use some products or some chemical substances or some components that is not a problem at the end of the life of the product when we start the, uh, the dismantling and the, the recycling. I think that this eco-design, eco-conception is, uh, well is well implemented in a lot of sector, including uh, the aircraft uh, sector, aeronautic sector, uh, because uh, it's uh, it's an opportunity to to have some products that are, are more safe for uh, environment. Um, the second step is what we do at the end of uh, of life of the cars, in a view to uh, dismount uh, the cars and to crush the the cars for reuse of the of the metals. And uh, there is. Um, a second, a third part, what is the uh, reuse of uh, uh, the used parts, uh, the, the spare parts. And uh, it's very interesting to see that when uh, the car is at the end of the life, so a lot of, uh, of parts uh, are uh, reusable for a new car, and uh, there is a market for that. So we need uh, to uh, find what are the good parts. And I think it is the same uh, for uh, the aircraft, uh, in the sector of uh, aeronautics. And then at the end, we have the uh, material closed loops, I mean, uh, to make sure that the used products and the used materials are reused uh, for the same use or for another. Okay, I develop here the uh, four steps. First one uh, about uh, eco conception, and you can see that 30 percent of the total mass of a new newly produced vehicle in Europe comes from recycled materials. And it's very interesting because the final goal will be to have a car with uh, some materials coming from recycled materials uh, at the level of. Uh, 100% if it's possible. It, it, it will be the final goal, but for today is one third. I think that we can uh, we can increase this uh, level. Uh, 50 kilos of recycled plastic are used in, uh, for example, the Renault Espace, and uh, Renault and Dacia vehicle offered 85% and 95% of both recyclable and uh, Recovery. Um, the second step um, is the starting of the vehicle's second life uh, with the recycling of parts and material. And uh, in this company, uh, a subsidiary has been uh, set up uh, to uh, manage uh, the collection and the handling of uh, end of life vehicles. And, uh, I think it's very important to be uh, to be involved in this area, and uh, what I can see is some uh, opportunities in your sector. Uh, we have the same way to deal uh, with the organization of uh, the both the dismantling and the, and the treatment and the recycling of uh, used products. I will come back to that uh, later. Well, and today uh, this system offered. Uh, a network of more than uh, 300 demolishers. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, more than uh, 300,000 uh, end of life vehicles are uh, treated, dismantled, and recycled uh, each year. What, what thing, uh, one thing is very important it's a reused, uh, the reuse of parts. Definitely, there are some uh, some parts in an old car that are uh, reusable, and so it's uh, very important to uh, uh, this concept. And now I move to uh, another case, uh, it, the case of Valdelia. Uh, Valdelia is uh, an organization 
uh, that deals with the uh, used um, used equipment, used uh, furniture equipment. Well, you can see it's a, a national collection and research system, and um, they are uh, registered by the French authorities. It's a non-profit organization, and they are financed by an eco contribution uh, posted on the sale price of all new professional furniture. Uh, the idea of Idelia is how to make end-of-life products tomorrow, tomorrow resources. Second life products and eco-design issue we, are, we need to be addressed in uh, the coming, in coming years by all the stakeholders, industry, local authorities, and profit organizations, but also collection and recycling sectors. And we can see that the uh, recurring topics have emerged during the last month and there is a link with the sector of aeronautics uh, because we have the uh, question of the fighting uh, out of cabins, uh, including uh, aircraft uh, cabin uh, in Second Life, and the construction of sustainable building materials, uh, material libraries. Uh, how Valdelia deals uh, with this uh, issue, they have decided to set up a cluster in Occitania because uh, Valdelia is located in Toulouse. And so the idea to have a cluster with all partners that could be interested by the development of uh, concept and organization or experience in the field of uh, circular economy was definitely very interesting. So the cluster is a network of actors and the goal is to work together uh, on the different uh, issues, eco-design, uh, integration of material or reuse part and uh, other, uh, all other opportunities. And uh, the objective of the cluster is also to support the uh, evolution uh, of the uh, of the region uh, and the, the production uh, by the region, by the different plants in the region, and to uh, anticipate the upcoming uh, paradigm uh, shift and customer demands around eco design and underflight products. And uh, the reason why uh, Valdelia set up this uh, cluster is to pool uh, all the multi stakeholders and uh, all the projects in a view to uh, develop very deep, very quickly the circular evolution of productive system. Um, so uh, the circular economic concept could apply also in the sector, as mentioned, even if it's an emerging concept, but you will see that uh, some very interesting uh, issues uh, are uh, on the table. And uh, it's, uh, the circular economy has definitely a potential to reshape the world supply chain. And uh, aviation uh, already utilizes some of the concepts associated with circular autonomy or economy. Then now we need to give uh, a more uh, global approach for all the sectors. And some, uh, a lot of uh, opportunities exist. The reuse of spare parts, as mentioned, the recycling and the fly aircraft material, and the reduce, reducing, reducing and valorizing uh, waste during flight and in ground infrastructure. And at the end, reducing energy, water, and raw material consumption. Let's, uh, I would like to show you what is the uh, average uh, composition in, uh, by weight of, uh, of an aircraft. Uh, it's very interesting to see that uh, the composites uh, weigh for more than 50%. Uh, and then after you have aluminium, titanium, steel. Uh, I mean, a lot of uh, metals or materials that could be easily uh, recycled and, and uh, recovered at uh, the end of life. Um, the amount of, uh, of uh, aircraft retired 
uh, today is between two, 12,000 and 15,000. Um, all these aircraft were um, parked in different parts. And now we have a, a, a waste stream, I can say, because we can uh, test a different operation for dismantling and now we can uh, reuse some used part and how we can uh, recycle uh, the uh, metals. And uh, the objective is definitively to develop efficient revenue building and environmentally sound method for aircraft disposal. Uh, just a quick look and uh, it will uh, open the door for my colleagues that will deliver a speech after this one. Um, the, the composite carbon uh, fiber is, as mentioned, uh, a critical issue because it is it represents more more or less 50 percent by weight of an aircraft. And the material recovery of this composite waste is a very promising field, and the alpha composite recycling will present uh, how they can do that. Um, just few. A um, few uh, words about the, the quantities uh, of the use of uh, composite carbon matrix uh, when they become a waste. Uh, the manufacturing, the amount of manufacturing waste is of uh, 2,000 tons per year in France and 10 tons per year in Occitania. Um, the waste stream is of uh, 80 and the uh, 800 ton uh, per year in 2000 uh, in 2030 and more than 100 uh, uh, 1500 tons per year in 2015 in Occitania and we are in this region some key players uh, with Starmark and uh, Arc plus uh, we can add extra okay I will be, give you just a quick look on what uh, has been developed by Tarmac uh, Aerosave. Uh, this company has been set up by three major shareholders, Airbus, Sarkozy, and the whole environment. And uh, Tarmac Aerosave offers flexible and reliable uh, solution for all aircraft owners and operators at every stage. And uh, main storage uh, today, 270 aircraft and uh, 80 engine uh, are a part and uh, they develop old operation uh, regarding uh, dismantling and recycling and we have three plants in France uh, Tarbes Lourdes, uh, Toulouse, uh, Francazal and Vatry and one plant in Spain at uh, the, the place of Terre. Um, how the concept of circular economy could apply to the aeronautic sectors and uh, I can say that the Green Deal is really an opportunity for the sector and especially with the program ASH 22, uh, 22 20, 2020, uh, which is an opportunity. Almost a billion euros will be spent in the second half uh, on a new Green Deal called under the European RNI program. And no less than 30% of this budget will be devoted to activities related to the Green Deal. And uh, the call will propose a clear impact oriented approach supporting the developing uh, development of ideas in pilot application and demonstration project. The call contains uh, 11 provisional areas and one area of the three aims to develop a clean and circular economy for industry. I mean, for closing the carbon cycle to fight climate change. So it's definitely an opportunity for the sector. And I uh, would like to conclude my presentation just with a few words uh, on uh, the uh, European Circular Economy Platform, uh, European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform. Uh, this uh, this uh, network has been set up by the European, uh, European Commission. It is a virtual platform. You can contribute by submitting content for this uh, website, good practices, some publications, some events, some network. And definitely it's very interesting because it's, uh, you, you, you can uh, exchange with some uh, colleagues or some uh, stakeholders all over in, the, in, the, in Europe, but all in, 
in the world and uh, definitely one you need to uh, challenge uh, your ideas or your project i think it's uh, it's uh, very interesting so you can go to the website uh, the called circularecony.europa.eu and you will uh, you will see that there are a lot of uh, good practices but unfortunately when you uh, use the k word aviation there is nothing no result and so it's my opinion that there are some very interesting cases, and uh, I, I hope some of you would be uh, able to uh, post some more, some more ideas or some project uh, on this website. Wow. And my conclusion will be more uh, a question. Uh, is the aeronautics industry ready to enter in the circular economy cycle? discuss the issue uh, after with your question or in the coming months because definitely it's a, a, a very interesting issue and uh, I'm sure that there are some very uh, very interesting uh, things to do in the, this sector. Well now I give uh, the floor to uh, Mr. Moulin uh, who is the second speaker from the company uh, Alpha Recyclage. Thank you uh, for your attention. I hope my presentation was interesting. Uh, okay. So, hello everyone. Um, thanks to uh, Aerospace Valley for uh, for having us discussing this uh, fundamental aspect of the the circular economy. So I will now uh, be talking to you about uh, recovery of waste uh, composite material from a recycling company perspective, which is uh, Alpha Recyclage Composite, uh, in order to give uh, to valorize uh, carbon fiber. Um, so first, uh, how and uh, to uh, what extent Alpha Recyclage Composite uh, does take part in the circular economy uh, concept, which uh, Emmanuel Beaurepair uh, mentioned in his talk. Um, so whether it is the, aeros the aerospace, uh, automotive, shipbuilding, um, or even wind energy, uh, the, the increasing use of uh, composite carbon fiber uh, reinforcement in, in, in this industry uh, suggest a strong increase of the waste uh, of these material in the coming years and uh, more specifically in a regulatory context uh, that will certainly uh, become uh, let's say uh, more and more restrictive in the in the field of recycling uh, requirements so now the challenge we have with the carbon fiber is that it's very complicated to recycle because uh, a composite material has uh, these distinct parts that, uh, well, it, it doesn't just melt, melt down like uh, steel, for example. But uh, at Alpha Recyclage Composite, uh, we've developed a thermochemical process called uh, steam thermolysis that uh, enables us to recover the carbon fiber uh, filaments from um, from manufacturing or uh, end-of-life uh, waste and uh, turn it into uh, recycled uh, dry uh, carbon fibers. So the recycling chain uh, that is currently developed by Alpha Recyclage Compo Composite um, is based on the treatment of composite waste by the steam thermolysis technology and uh, the recycling of treated carbon fibers obtained after uh, the treatment in uh, in the manufacture of uh, semi-finished products, so it can be compound, it can be towed, it can be mat, uh, intended to be used in the production of second-generation composite. Um, so Alpha Recyclage Composite um, devoted much of its uh, of its resources in the past years uh, to develop in partnership um, with academic research 
uh, this innovative and efficient uh, recycling process able to provide to provide the, 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 the answer to the, the problem raised just before. Uh, so our uh, steam technology is uh, the subject of several international patents. It is the result since 2009 uh, of an ongoing partnership with academic research, so with the Institut Clément Adair and the Rhapsody Center in, uh, in Albi. Um, and it led to several uh, doctoral theses and since 2016 to a joint laboratory. Uh, you can see our, our laboratory pilot is, uh, is shown on the picture. And uh, in mid to late uh, 2020, so this year, we are currently going into operation with our uh, industrial scale steam thermolysis uh, demonstrator uh, at Castel Sarrazin. Um, so you can actually see the, the uh, industrial location on the picture as well. Uh, the demonstrator will be uh, able to treat around 450 tons per year of composite uh, material. Um, so Alpha Recyclage Composite is involved since uh, 2015 in several demonstration and uh, research and development projects. So first, the Vapocar project, um, which is supported by the French Ministry of, uh, of Armed Forces with a partnership with the uh, Institut Clément Adair uh, for the recycling of carbon fiber and the recovery of, reco of recycled carbon fiber into the uh, automotive industry. Uh, then we take part as well in the ADMIS project, which is uh, supported by uh, BPI France and uh, Zodiac Nautic as leader of the, of the consortium uh, for the, the recycling of carbon fiber and recovery uh, of recycled fibers in the boating uh, industry. Um, more recently, uh, we are also involved in the Customize Size project, which is a Clean Sky 2 uh, project alongside Latat and Riscol, um, with, with the aim of developing new sizing strategy uh, for recycled uh, carbon fiber. And uh, also important, uh, important point, in 2018, uh, we had the, uh, the entry of two aerospace companies uh, Fresine uh, Aero Equipment and STS Group into the company's capital. Um, so now the, the steam thermolysis. Um, so the research and development conducted uh, until now uh, on our steam thermolysis technology for the treatment of composite uh, materials highlights uh, different points. Um, first, uh, an efficient uh, resin removal rate without any surface uh, damage of the reclaimed carbon fiber. So you have an example uh, of this result with the micrograph of the recycled carbon fibers after steam thermolysis. Uh, we also have a, a very good retention of the mechanical properties of the carbon fibers reclaimed after the process which is characterized uh, by the means of uh, some, uh, some reliable tests. And also we have a mechanical properties of uh, thermoplastic composites reinforced with these recycled carbon fibers that are similar to those of composite uh, reinforced with virgin carbon fiber. So this is uh, very positive. Um, some, some types of uh, of uh, viable uh, waste streams can include uh, uncured, uh, uncured prepreg, uh, cured laminates, uh, dry carbon fibers, waste, uh, or uh, end-of-life products, obviously, uh, containing uh, high amounts, high proportion of, uh, of carbon fiber. Um, so by, by doing so, we we save around uh, four to five times the energy that is used to manufacture uh, virgin carbon fibers. And uh, obviously this leads to a significant cost saving over virgin carbon fiber at the end. So uh, like I said, the, the thermolysis technology um, 
has been developed over uh, several years by the company and is also currently industrialized in a um, in a different configuration by a sister company, uh, Alpha Recyclage Franche Comté, uh, in the field of uh, scrap tire recycling for the, the recovery and the valorization of carbon black. Um, so for following, following the recovery of the carbon fibers uh, from the various waste, uh, the, the various waste streams, Alpha Recyclage produces, uh, let's say, three main types of converted product. Uh, so we have uh, short fibers, uh, which is uh, chopped carbon fibers that are idly used uh, for thermoplastic injection molding and uh, compounding processes, uh, typically for application in the automotive sectors and um, more generally in the, the, the plastic industry. Um, so we have also long, uh, long fibers. So um, these long fibers are mainly used for thermosets and thermoplastic molding compound uh, used for panels in the, in the automotive or the, the boating industry. Um, we have also non-woven, uh, so non-woven mats. It can be, can be sim simple non-woven, it can be stitch bonded, it can be commingled with thermoplastic fibers. And uh, these products are uh, ideally, ideally suited to uh, uh, more uh, closed, closed mold uh, processes or for the production of intermediate product, such as uh, prepreg or even uh, SMC material for uh, stamping plates in the boating or uh, the automotive industry as well. So, um, the development and, uh, and uh, implementation of our, of our uh, pre-industrial demonstrator of the, the steam thermolysis and uh, more generally the entire future uh, industrial chain of carbon fiber composite recycling will allow us to propose these SAMI products uh, and uh, enables us to, um, to lightweight to lightweight vehicles uh, because this material can help us reduce vehicle weight, which uh, obviously improves fuel economy and reduces emissions. Uh, so this is it for my part. I'm looking forward to your questions and thank you for, for your attention. Yes, thank you both to Emmanuel and Ludwig for your nice presentations, a lot of information. I actually shall also thank Valdelia organization, they made the go between between Aerospace Valley and Monsieur Beaurepaire. Now, indeed, we have a few questions on our screen here. The first one, first of all, maybe also Gennaro Russo of Campania Aerospace District wishes to thank both speakers for the presentation. He is the coordinator of the ESCP Euro SME project. And he also ask a question, can you please explain why nobody or very few people talk about the reuse of specific products? This is for Emmanuel. A very specific and simple example is the one of glass bottles. These could be just cleaned, sterilized and re-labeled without the need to destroy them and produce a new bottle. So this is a question I think more for Monsieur Beaurepaire. Okay, I, I, I've uh, not very well uh, understand the, the second part of the question, but uh, uh, on the first part of the question, it was why um, the reuse of specific materials is not developed. As we yes. have, uh, we have an, an expression in France, what is uh, c'est l'œuf et la poule. I mean uh, the egg and the poultry, you know, because uh, you know uh, when we we need to start with a new waste stream, uh, we need to see uh, and to um, evaluate what are the different parts, the different components, and at the end what we can do with this. I have heard during all my career some people saying, "Ah, oh, we cannot recycle this product," uh, or some recycler. Uh, 
saying that uh, they are able to recycle all the product and so on. So at the end of the of the of the line, uh, what is very important is to see if we have a flu uh, a flu of used material, and uh, with the help of uh, expert, as uh, for example Mr. Moulin. Uh, we we have to go uh, to develop some program of uh, research and some program for new technologies in a view to make sure we can do with this. I, I will give you an example for that. Uh, it's the case of uh, lithium-ion batteries. Uh, lithium-ion batteries uh, contains uh, some um, some metals, but also some chemicals. And uh, while you are going uh, in the, to de you are trying to develop a technology for the recycling. You have uh, the, um, the, the you, you you focus on what is interesting in these used batteries. I mean, uh, some uh, material, some lithium or some cobalt or I don't know. And uh, in uh, in the same time, uh, you have to see what we need to uh, uh, to uh, to treat with a specific treatment, especially the chemical uh, components. But definitely, I'm sure that for all products, whatever the sector, we can find some uh, way to uh, recycle the used products. But we have to go in deep um, to make sure that we know very well the different components and what we can do with this, and then to uh, see if we can, what is the, the financial uh, balance uh, between the cost of the uh, recovered material compared to the uh, uh, the cost of dismantling, sorting, treating, and so on. Okay. And the second part of the question? Well, it was the example of glass bottles. That, of that glass? Destroyed and then rather than cleaning them and, and reusing them. This was just an example given. Oh, okay. I I would propose to move ahead as two questions coming up more addressed, I think, for Monsieur Moulin. The first one is how are your operations financed? Well, I think this question came up when you were presenting your last or next to the last slide. But maybe not obvious to answer like this. We can also get back to Antoine Lamy in a private mode and the other more generic question is uh, asked by Claudio Votto are you considering any technique to get continuous long fibers again for Ludovic yes um, uh, so to answer the the first question um, well, like uh, like I presented during the, the during the presentation for the in, in the slides, we um, we are involved in some research and development project because it's a research and development project. And how it is financed? Um, uh, it is financed within within the the the, the three projects that, that I presented, mainly by the Vapocar project, which is uh, by the the, the French Ministry of Armed Forces and with the ADMIS project by uh, BPI France and Zodiac Nautique. So this is mainly how it is uh, uh, financed. Uh, and then, like I said, uh, in uh, 2000, uh, 2018, we had the entry of the uh, of two, uh, two, aero, two aerospace companies uh, in, into the, companies, the, the company capital. So uh, this is mainly how it is uh, financed. Um, and uh, the second question was, um, can, can, can you yes, remind yes. me? The second question was, uh, are you considering any technique to get continuous long fibers? Um, okay, yes, thank you. Um, yes, so we are currently uh, currently uh, uh, treating <laughs> treating this uh, this topic. Uh, so we have uh, we have uh, one or two one of two uh, processes that are um, in the scope in the scope of our development project uh, with some uh, some partners, uh, but this is uh, obviously where um, where the, the the more value is. So yes, we are we are considering this uh, 
this uh, um, this long fiber uh, objective uh, with the with two partners uh, for at least one or two uh, different processes. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions? Please don't hesitate to type them in. Otherwise, I have one from Monsieur Vorepère. Are there any regulations on an international scale outside Europe uh, in terms of yeah, rules and norms, whatever? Or does everyone worldwide in his own individual country apply his own rules for recycling? Uh, you are right, because uh, you know that probably um, um, some uh, governments are investigating how to apply the same rules all over the world, because uh, uh, it's uh, always the same story when uh, if uh, only uh, European players uh, do something for environment with some system for the collection, for the recycling, for the dismantling, um, and if some other countries in the world do nothing, there is a problem from a competition point of view. So it's very important, but I, I have been involved in the past at the level of OECD or uh, UNEP, uh, United Nations Environment Programme. And definitively the idea is how we can develop some uh, regulation that could apply to all the uh, actors. But the first things to do um, in the same time of uh, the uh, setting up of a regulation framework is how we um, we finance uh, the the system. And, uh, and in this way, uh, the producer responsibility principle is very important because we, we need to make sure that each producer of uh, aircraft or plane and so uh, pay for the uh, end of life of products and then organize with uh, all the players uh, the way uh, for the dismantling and the, and the recycling and uh, uh, as it was a question I think about the, fi the financing of the system I think that uh, when you have uh, a, a stream that is well known you know wh which type of materials uh, you can uh, uh, extracted and uh, what is the pride of these materials on the uh, other uh, secondary raw materials you can say well at the end of the process we need i don't know uh, what are the amount but we need an amount for the balancing of the system i mean uh, uh, something that is uh, necessary uh, to make sure that the, all the operation are paid to the uh, to the partners and then this cost has to be uh, included in the in the in the sell price of the new product. It's how all the system for uh, collection and recycling are um, are rolling today. And uh, I think it's possible to do that in this area, or for trucks, or for cars, or for uh, 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 all other uh, uh, act actor for trains, for example. And it's not very easy to, um, to achieve this, this goal uh, because based on my experience, when we start, we say, well, the amount will be uh, very, very important, very, very important. But at the end, when you have set up the system and so it's possible to achieve the goal of a balanced system. I mean, uh, the resale of the recovered materials uh, are able uh, to finance all the operation related to the uh, dismantling and the treating of the used product. Okay, thank you. Well, I'd say one last question that pops up. Uh, are there any standards or norms for the use of parts from recycled materials in, in aerospace? I think it's more addressed to Ludovic, the question. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know any specifics. Uh, I, I don't know any, any specific standard uh, for for that, uh, what we do uh, basically is that we take the the standards that are used uh, that are used normally in the industry because this is where we want to to go back with our uh, recycled product. So uh, there is a need. Obviously, there is a need for uh, 
uh, developing maybe new standards that are more adapted to our product. But uh, uh, so far, uh, what we do is we try to we try to go into the uh, the product that are already known with the standard that are already used. So this is maybe uh, yes a challenging uh, opportunity for developing new standards. Okay, thank you. I can see no further questions. It's noon 12. I propose to close the webinar. I wish to thank everyone for your interest. Again, our speakers. And I wish you a nice day. Bon appétit. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.